Hello everyone on listening online. I'm Aditya Chulakuri. I'm a third year undergraduate student at the Australian National University located in Canberra, Australia. In this video talk, I'll be presenting on a project we've had the absolute privilege of working on since July 2019. Um, it's on the architecture independent analysis of memory access patterns. Um, the submission title of our paper to iWACL is Characterizing Optimizations to Memory Access Patterns Using Architecture Independent Program Features. Um, on our team, we've got myself um, and Dr. Josh Millthorpe and Dr. Bo Johnston, who are uh, the co-authors for my paper and, more importantly, my supervisors for this uh, project that we embarked on. Um, and to introduce you to the problem we've tackled with over this project, um, I'll first familiarize you with two big trends in supercomputing over the last decade. Um, the first trend in supercomputing is that high-performance computing systems are increasingly incorporating a diverse range of computer architectures. So older supercomputers used to consist of hundreds, maybe thousands of traditional CPUs, um, but modern supercomputers are aggregating those traditional CPUs with FPGAs, GPUs, ASICs, system on chips, um, and all of those new technologies. Um, and obviously OpenCL by its language design was designed to support um, all of these heterogeneous architectures. The second big trend is in computer memory. Compute capabilities of modern computers are increasing at a much faster rate than the speed of reads and writes to memory. To get around this, hardware designers come up with highly specialized memory layouts. For example, CPU designers for the last 25 or 30 years have been getting around this problem by introducing hardware caches um, and introducing cache predictors. Um, and these systems get more and more complex as time goes on. NVIDIA GPUs do something similar with shared memory banks and the general idea of non-uniform memory access or NUMA structures have been used in supercomputing for quite some time. Um, the idea of caching particularly tends to reward programs with good spatial locality. Um, so programs that frequently access nearby memory addresses tend to perform better. Um, this is an idea we use um, in our work and I'll mention it more uh, later in the presentation. So this all makes the job of optimizing performance critical HPC code quite challenging. Firstly, not only does a HPC developer need to think about all of the heterogeneous architectures that code could be executing on, they also need to have a really good idea of the bottlenecks of their code on each of these hardware targets. Um, and from the second trend, one of the sources of these bottlenecks is the complex memory structures that the hardware designers have cooked up for us. And this all begs the question, what kinds of patterns intrinsic to the code um, in the memory access is done by a program are good for performance. In short, we want a way of understanding how code interacts with memory, independent of the target architecture. And we want this analysis to be done in a way that's meaningful and can guide HPC developers in optimizing their code based on the knowledge and information they gained about it from this analysis. To achieve this, we need a framework to analyze code in an architecture independent fashion. Um, the architecture independent workload characterization tool AWIC, um, was developed by my supervisors, Josh and Bo. Um, and AWIC is a pub plugin for the OCL Grind OpenCL device simulator. Um, OCL Grind takes OpenCL kernels and executes them on an abstract virtual OpenCL device. So that means that OCL Grind provides the framework only that the OpenCL language spec provides. It respects the OpenCL execution model of workgroups and work items um, and the OpenCL memory model and OpenCL um, barriers, but there are no architecture specific features like cache hierarchies or out of order execution. Um, this provides a framework on which we can build plugins and tools um, to do architecture independent analysis. So Airwick is a plugin for OCL Grind and it collects metrics or statistics that summarize some of the architecture independent characteristics of the target OpenCL program. Um, to do this, AWIC tracks um, the hardware independent events that occur in the OCL Grind simulation, such as memory loads and stores performed by each OpenCL work item. Um, to give some examples of the metrics that AWIC currently collects, um, AWIC collects memory statistics, such as the total memory footprint of a program, and the information entropy of all memory addresses accessed by the program. 
Um, and these two together tell us firstly how much memory access occurs in the program and secondly how evenly distributed these memory accesses are in the program. To guide our investigation we needed to understand what memory access patterns are good. So we looked through a GPU vendor recommended optimization manual and implemented all the suggested memory optimizations to a n-sized square matrix multiplication code. Um, the unoptimized OpenCL kernel has the code for a single um, work item which calculates one element of the output matrix by doing the vector dot product of the appropriate row and column from the two input matrices. The number of memory accesses in matrix multiplication is obviously O n cubed and each of these is to global memory regions um, which obviously tend to be slower on GPUs. For the first optimization we note that memory accesses are performed on a cache line basis so closed by memory accesses are good. Um, some devices have local memory on chip which works like user controlled cache. Um, and to use this in optimization, um, we coalesce global memory accesses to store chunks of matrix A to fast on-chip local memory. Um, this amortizes the cost of slow global memory accesses to matrix A. For the second optimization, we extend the same idea to matrix B. Parallel accesses to shared memory are also optimized when parallel execution units hit close by chunks of shared memory on the same clock cycle. And it turns out that if we implicitly transpose matrix A when we load it in from global memory into shared memory, um, that allows us to parallelly access um, different uh, memory banks in the, sh in the shared memory bank structure at every clock cycle. And this gives us um, better usage of the uh, memory bank structure on GPUs. Um, to validate our methodology, we ran the kernels on an NVIDIA Tesla P100 GPU. Um, as expected, each optimization tends to speed up the program, um, modulo the asymptotically negligible um, overheads of some of the optimizations which peter out as you increase the problem sizes. So from our analysis, we noticed that there are a couple of trends in the optimization strategies performed. Firstly, using OpenCL local memory is a good idea when the architecture we're going to be running on supports things like shared memory, which give you fast on-chip memory. So to characterize this through AWIC, we wrote the relative local memory usage metric. This reports the number of memory accesses that happened to OpenCL local memory as a proportion of the total number of memory accesses performed by the program. The second trend is that parallel accesses to closed by memory regions are a good idea. On GPU shared memory architectures, these closed by memory accesses lead to memory access coalescing and better use of shared memory banks. This is kind of like the idea of a spatial locality for CPU cache hierarchies, but generalized to the parallelism in GPUs. So in particular, we note that we know that spatial locality is a single threaded concept, but we can generalize it to GPUs um, by thinking about um, how close by memory accesses are in, in the same time step of the program's execution, or when um, cores execute, when GPU cores execute memory accesses um, in lockstep, how close together are those memory addresses that are being accessed? To capture this idea of parallel spatial locality, um, of a program, we can break apart the timeline of the OpenCL kernel's execution into discrete time steps. So these logical time steps um, are where a single memory access is performed by each thread in a work group. Then we record the set of memory accesses made in that time step for all work items in the work group. Um, and for numbers between 1 and 10, we drop n number of least significant bits, so 3 in the given example, and calculate the information entropy of the resulting set. So by doing this, what we've got is 10 numbers, um, with, which together um, characterize the spread of memory accesses performed in um, a logical time step by our OpenCL kernel within a work group. 
So on this slide, I provide a um, formal definition for the parallel spatial locality metric. Um, and so far, we've collected a huge amount of data, so 10 real numbers for each time step of the program's execution um, for each work group um, of the program. Um, what we do then to aggregate all of this is to average the entropy values we've collected um, after dropping n bits um, across all the time steps in the program's execution and then um, average those values across um, the work groups in the program. Um, this gives us 10 real numbers that are associated to each kernel invocation um, that summarize um, the parallel spatial locality within the whole kernel's execution profile. Um, and there's one final step we do um, in data manipulation, which is to note that um, the theoretical maximum for a parallel sp spatial locality value, um, any, any of those um, 10 values we collect, is log base two of the number of threads in a work group. Um, we can normalize the PSL metric um, we get by dividing the obtained values by this number. Um, and this allows us to effectively compare the PSL metric across different workloads with um, possibly different partition of OpenCL work items um, and different numbers of work groups. And the main takeaway is that the steep drop in PSL as a number of bits dropped is increased um, will correlate to localization of memory accesses um, done in each time step. Now, what does that really mean? Um, it's best explained with an example, which will be coming up in a couple of slides. Right, so to test the methodology that we've come up with, um, we ran our four matrix multiply kernels of increasing um, optimization level from left to right um, through the AWIC simulator. And here we presented the results. As you can see, um, the old metrics and relative local memory usage are all able to distinguish between the first three kernels. Um, relative local memory usage in particular increases as we increasingly rely on shared memory as we um, perform the optimizations as we expect. Um, but looking at the last stage of optimizations, all the metrics presented here can't measure any difference between um, the last two kernels. And that's because the subtle difference in the code structure of internally um, implicitly um, transposing um, one of the tiled matrices um, as you bring it in from, um, from global memory into local memory um, is not something that can be captured. Um, that code structure is not something that AWIC captures um, currently or through relative local memory usage. Um, and this is where um, parallel spatial locality comes in. On this slide, we're looking at the parallel spatial locality metric that we collect for each of the four matrix multiply kernels. Um, the parallel spatial locality metric is the only one that's able to distinguish between the last two kernels. Um, and we find that the heavily optimized kernel, um, coalesced ABT, has the steepest drop off in n bits drop parallel spatial locality. Um, as the memory accesses are most localized um, in that kernel. And this is um, where um, the speed up comes from as well. With this proof of concept under our belt, we wanted to rigorously test this metric on a diverse range of OpenCL codes and interpret the results. Um, the extended Open Dwarfs benchmark suite captures the diversity of high performance computing workloads by representing each of the 13 Berkeley dwarfs. Um, these dwarfs are distinct patterns of computations that are common in HPC workloads. The workloads we test against are completely unoptimized for any architecture to avoid any bias towards certain technology. This allows us to look at how different computation patterns affect the locality of memory accesses, and as a result, cache and coalesced memory performance on current hardware. I'll go through some of the results we collected from running our modified version of AWIC, on the benchmark suite, and firstly, justifying the results we got, and secondly, hopefully give you an idea of how the metrics could be used by developers to understand memory access patterns in OpenCL code.
On this slide, we can see the collected parallel spatial locality metric for selected codes from the extended Open Dwarfs benchmark suite. With the normalization applied, um, we can compare the collected parallel spatial locality values across benchmarks with different workgroup and item partitioning. The GEM benchmark in the extended Open Dwarfs computes the electrostatic surface potential of a biomolecule by calculating the sum of charges contributed by all the atoms on the molecule on a list of surface vertices of that molecule. The computation pattern of the code is highly regular across all the work items in the code. Each OpenCL work item works on a single vertex, accessing data on each atom. Atom data is accessed in a serial pattern simultaneously by each work item. This means that the code uses cache hierarchies highly effectively. On GPUs, every memory access to global memory reads a single atom's data at every point in time. This is a scenario of extreme memory access coalescing caused by an ideally localized set of memory accesses being performed at each time step of the program execution. As such, we see that the PSL metric is almost zero and it drops off rapidly. All of this indicates that memory accesses by each parallel thread are very strongly localized. Now, this time, let's take a look at a workload that GPUs struggle to outperform CPUs on. Um, Needleman Wunsch is an important algorithm used to perform protein sequence alignment, um, and it does that by identifying the similarity level between two strings of amino acids. Each element of a 2D similarity matrix is dependent on its north, west, and northwest neighbors, and this enforces a wavefront computation pattern. Each OpenCL kernel invocation acts on an anti-diagonal of the similarity matrix, um, with consecutive threads acting on consecutive rows and columns along the anti-diagonal. But because, the, because of the data dependence relations, um, you find that the, each thread can only access um, elements on separate rows of the similarity matrix um, in a parallel time step. Um, this means that there's almost no parallel locality between those memory accesses. The PSL metric is a constant value, uh, which is the worst possible drop-off that um, PSL can have, um, and that's indicative of this memory access pattern. As expected, this is actually the reason for poor GPU performance. Um, things like cache locality on CPUs and definitely memory access coalescing on GPUs are very low for this code, and the memory bottleneck means that the compute capability of a GPU is not at all um, used to its full potential. Another workload in the extended open dwarfs is the compressed sparse row, or CSR, matrix vector multiplication. Here, matrices are represented in compressed form. A one-dimensional array stores all the non-zero values of the matrix with two helper matrices indicating the number and location of non-zero elements of the matrix in each row. Um, the task performed in this workload is a symbol matrix multipl vector multiplication. But because these uh, matrices are stored in a compressed sparse row data structure, um, this induces a data dependent control flow. So memory accesses to matrix elements are dependent on specific runtime values of each of those helper matrices. Now this leads to poor parallel memory access locality for a large enough matrix, because each of those memory accesses is going to be very disparate depending on those runtime values. Um, nevertheless, um, accesses at each time step do still access the same input array, so we still see some measure of locality. Um, and this is seen by the steady drop off in the collected metric. So this shows us that for some codes, um, even if data accesses are data dependent, um, because of the uh, data structures that are being used, that induces um, a locality to memory accesses. Uh, GPF performance still suffers due to the unpredictability of the memory addresses accessed and the sizes of the input arrays involved. Um, and from performance results, we find that the memory unit is busy for almost 99% of execution time across various GPU, uh, GPUs across different vendors and different microarchitectures. So we developed two metrics um, proposed to be included into AIRWIC. 
In particular, the parallel spatial locality metric is a novel way to understand the spatial locality of memory accesses in a parallel OpenCL program. And we're the first to do this in architecture independent fashion. In future work, we can extend this deep dive methodology of our paper to other optimization strategies, not only memory access patterns. We can also add metrics that capture the essence of optimization strategies on CPUs and FPGAs. All of this will improve AWIC so HPC programmers can use it to understand and improve their code for arbitrary architectures. Now that brings my presentation to a close. Um, I would like to thank my supervisors, Josh Millthorpe and Bo Johnston for their ongoing support, guidance and countless hours spent with me throughout our project. Um, thank you and thank you all for listening.